It says, rest if you must, but never quit. Paul never quit. Let's visit uh, with him on the third missionary journey. The length of Paul's stay here at Antioch, you're looking at Antioch, after the second missionary journey is not known. It is likely that some months at least elapsed before he started from there on his third missionary journey. After he had spent some time there, he departed and went over the region of Galatia, Phrygia, in order, strengthening all the disciples after soul service. Having passed through the upper coasts, he at length arrived at Ephesus, which was to be his chief center during this itinerary. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. In Ephesus, Paul found about 12 men who had evidently been taught by Apollos, but had not received a full knowledge of the gospel. These he instructed more fully, and upon being rebaptized, they received the Holy Spirit. So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying in the saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about twelve in all. For about three months Paul preached and reasoned in the synagogue, then because of opposition, <laughs> shame again, he and his converts moved to the second school of one Tyrannus, where Paul held daily meetings. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. This school became his headquarters for two years, during which all they which dwelt in Asia heard the gospel. Thousands of people got the message from Paul. And this continued for two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Because Jesus is the sweetest name there is, with the sweetest message, taking away our sins and giving us eternal life. Many miracles were wrought during this time. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. A great number were converted, for mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burnt them, in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. I love this phrase. The word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. There's power in the word, my dear friend. And as you read the story of Paul, the Word, will work something mightily in your life. Toward the end of his stay in Ephesus, Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, probably in the spring of AD 57. 
In that epistle, he revealed his plans to visit Corinth via Macedonia after remaining at Ephesus and at Pentecost. Now I will come to you when I pass through Macedonia, for I am passing through Macedonia, and it may be that I will remain or even spend the winter with you, that you may send me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not wish to see you now on the way, but I hope to stay a while with you, if the Lord permits, but I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. If in the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me? If the dead do not rise, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. This happened when a silversmith named Demetrius, a prominent member of a guild of manufacturers of shrines in the honour of the goddess Artemis or the Tiana, she's got two names, became greatly concerned over the loss of business occasioned by so many turning to Christianity. He therefore called the craftsmen together and pointed out that Paul's preaching against the worship of idols had affected their business, not only locally but throughout much of the province of Asia. Chaps, we've got to do something about this. He further pointed out that Paul's preaching was undermining respect for the goddess and her temple, which all Asia and the world worshipped. And about that time there arose a great commotion about the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, Men, men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may, dis may be despised and the magnificence destroyed whom all Asia and the world worship, listen to the arguments. At this, Demetrius' hearers became highly incensed and began shouting, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! And they kept on repeating this shout. They succeeded in stirring the whole city to indignation seeking for someone upon whom to vent their wrath. They dragged two of Paul's travelling companions into the theatre. Paul decided to go in also, but was prevented by his disciples and some prominent Ephesian friends. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana, may be despised and the magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipped. And when Paul wanted to go into the people, the disciples would not allow him. Then some of the officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent to him pleading that he would not venture into the theatre. The mob was finally calmed by the town clerk, and dispersed without doing any damage. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and most of them did not know why they had come together. <laughs> oh man, what a life! And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander motioned with his hand and wanted to make his defence to the people. But then they found out, but when they found out that he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about two hours, Great is Diana 
of the Ephesians. They must have been hoarse after two hours shouting. And when the city clock had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is temple guardian of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Zeus? Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For you brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. But if you have any other inquiry to make, it shall be determined in the lawful assembly. For we are in danger of being called in question for today's uproar. There being no reason which we may give to account for this disorderly gathering. And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. After this tumult, Paul deemed it advisable to leave Ephesus, where he had spent three years, probably from about AD 54 to 57. Taking leave of the believers, he set out for Macedonia, possibly to visit Corinth during Paul's stay at Ephesus. Next time, to Macedonia and to Corinth again. Father, we learn that many people came to the truth, the truth of justification by faith, salvation freely given, and we heard that many in Asia accepted this good news. We will be meeting them in heaven one of these days. Thank you for the dedication of Paul. May his spirit, his passion inspire us to witness of your goodness. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for watching this presentation. To subscribe to our channel, Click here, then click the bell to get notifications. For the next presentation, click here. See you next time.